This video is the fourth in a series of revision videos about the A-level chemistry topic of rate equations. And in this video, we're introducing the Arrhenius equation and looking at the various different formats that it can be rearranged into. As we've seen in the previous videos in this series, rates of reaction can be characterised by using a rate equation. And this takes the form of rate equals a rate constant K multiplied by the concentration of each of the reactants that affects the rate of reaction raised to the power of the partial order for that reactant. So in other words, the rate equation shows the impact of changing the concentration of a reactant on the rate of reaction. And we can work out what these partial orders are by using experimental data in which we've changed the concentration. But as we know, changing concentration is not the only way to influence the rate of reaction. You know even from studying GCSE chemistry that as you increase the temperature of a reaction, this increases the rate of reaction. And we can relate this to the frequency of collisions and also to the number of particles that have the activation energy. But as we look at our rate equation, we can see that if rate is increasing, there are only two ways that this could happen. One would be if K were changing and one would be if the concentrations were changing. So if we know that the concentrations for a particular series of reactions have remained constant, then this must mean that if the rate is increasing, it's because K has increased. So therefore we can say that as temperature increases, K increases. Rather than just making a qualitative statement, the Arrhenius equation allows us to say quantitatively what will happen to the rate of reaction as temperature is changed. It's an equation that describes the relationship between activation energy, temperature and rate. And this allows us to make predictions, not just about changing the temperature, but also about what would happen if we introduced a catalyst and therefore altered the activation energy. So this is the Arrhenius equation, and I appreciate it is a fairly intimidating looking equation the first time you meet it. But actually, a lot of these different components are things that you are already familiar with. So we start off with K, the rate constant, and as you know, you can derive this by looking at a series of experimental data where the concentration of the reactants have been changed. And you also know that the rate constant doesn't have specific units that are always the same. We're going to work out those units each time by looking at the particular rate equation for that reaction. So it will always include a seconds to the minus one term, but it could also include um, moles to the minus one decimeters cubed or moles to the minus two decimeters to the six or various other variations of that. Then we've got the temperature and as we know temperature always needs to be in Kelvin in order for us to get the right number out and the gas constant which you met very early on in year 12 which has a value of about 8.314 and you are given that in the exam and we know that the gas constant is in joules per mole per Kelvin. Now, because the gas constant is in joules per moles per Kelvin, and because we need to be using um, units of sort of the same magnitude as each other for all our different terms, that means that activation energy is also given in joules per mole. Now, that's important because the activation energy for pretty much any chemical reaction tends to be quite a large number in joules per mole. So it's usual when you're writing down the activation energy at the end of a question to give it in kilojoules per mole. And the question is probably going to say to you, please give your answer in kilojoules per mole. So it's just one of those things you need to be aware of, like when you're doing um, Gibbs free energy equations, that you're almost certainly going to have to convert and just kind of have that in the back of your mind that that's an easy step to miss out and forget. Now, the bits that you might not be familiar with, particularly if you don't do A-level maths, are the E and the A. So E is a special number. It's an irrational number and it has a value of about 2.72. So just like you have a pi button on your calculator, and if you press that pi button, it gives you 3.142, blah, blah, blah. You have an E button as well, and that gives you a number of about 2.72. So that's what you need to be using at this point. And it's important that this whole index here, this negative activation energy over gas constant times temperature, that is only a power for E. So you're going to use E on your calculator and put it to the power of all of this lot. And then that answer is multiplied by A. A is not raised to the power. We haven't got any brackets here. Now, A is your Arrhenius constant, or it's sometimes called a pre-exponential factor. And basically what it is, is it's a number for that particular reaction that relates to the collision frequency and also the orientation of the particles. So particularly if you think about reactions that might be um, controlled by a catalyst, by an enzyme, 
um, and it really matters how the particles are orientated when they collide and that's really going to influence the rate of the reaction so that's why that's in there um, and a is going to have the same units as k Let's look at how we'd actually use this in practice to calculate the rate constant K for a given temperature, having been given the Arrhenius constant and also the activation energy. So here's my Arrhenius equation. And personally, the way that I would approach this is to work out what the value of that index is and then just use that number because there's just so much that can go wrong if I'm trying to put this into the calculator as it is. So my value for the activation energy divided by RT is going to be 40,500 because I need the units to be joules per mole, not kilojoules per mole, as I've been given, divided by 8.31, the gas constant, multiplied by 303 because that temperature needs to be in Kelvin. So I've added 273 to 30 degrees C. That gives me a value for that index of um, 16.08, or I should say it will be negative 16.08 because actually the index is negative activation energy divided by RT. So I can now say that K is going to be 7.92 times 10 to the 5, which is my value for the Arrhenius constant, multiplied by E raised to a power of negative 16.08. So if I multiply those together, I get this number. And then it's obviously important that I give my answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. So I'm gonna reduce that to three because the rest of the data in the question is given to three significant figures. And I know that the units for K are always going to be the same as the units for A for a particular reaction. So given that in the question, I'm given a value of A that has the units seconds to the minus one, my units here are also going to be seconds to the minus one. Now, this is a really useful equation in industrial chemistry because it allows us to optimise a particular reaction um, and make sure that the rate is exactly what we want it to be because you don't always want a reaction to go as fast as humanly possible. But it's also quite likely that in your A-level exams, you're asked to solve this equation for one of the terms. And a really common one of these is working out what the activation energy for a particular reaction is. So anyway, we need to be able to um, rearrange this equation to make every single different one of these variables the subject. So to start with the most straightforward one of these, if we want to make the Arrhenius constant, that pre-exponential factor, um, the subject of the equation, then um, we obviously need to get rid of e to the power of the minus um, activation energy over RT. Um, and so at the moment they're multiplying. And so what we do is we divide both sides of the equation by that. And we get this. So that one is quite nice and straightforward. Unfortunately, none of the rest of them are. In order to rearrange the Arrhenius equation any further, so that you can look at the other terms that are involved, then you need to understand what logs are showing you. And if you're someone who doesn't do A-level maths, then this topic may be the first time that you've met logarithmic notation. Um, and it can be a little bit counterintuitive, but it's not too bad. But one thing I would say is that it is really worth you memorising the original Arrhenius equation and a rearranged form that has the logs in, and then just working from that halfway house rather than starting rearranging from the very beginning. So it will come as absolutely no surprise to anybody to know that 10 squared is 100 and 10 cubed is 1000. But we're going to use those in a second, so I'm just going to leave them there. But sometimes there'll be an occasion where I have 10 to the power of something, let's call it x, and I have an answer of 650. And what I want to know is, well, what's the value of x? So this is the tactic that I'm going to be taking when I'm trying to find out what the activation energy is, because we've got e to that power of the negative activation energy over rt, and so I need to know what the value of that term is. And so for this, I can use logarithms. So you have on your calculator various logarithm buttons. And the easiest one to explain this with is log 10. So here I have log base 10. And if I put in the number 100, I get the answer 2. So what that tells me is that if I put 10 to the power of 2, I get 100. And likewise, if I put into my calculator log with a base 10 of 1000, it tells me the number that I need to use as a power for 10 to get 1000 is 3. So then if I've got a number that isn't a normal power of 10, like 1000 or 10,000 or a million, I can still use this function. I can put into my calculator log base 10 650 and it will give me 2.81 blah 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 and what that tells me is that if I put 10 to the power of that I will get the answer 650. 
So I can use this logarithm function to find out what the value of the power is. And we don't just have logarithms with a base of 10, we can have a logarithm with a base of any number. So log 2 of 16 is 4, and that tells me that if I put 2 to the power of 4, I get 16. And then we have our friend E, who we met slightly earlier in this video. So log base E of 100 is 4.605, which tells me that if I put E to the power of 4.605, I would get 100. Now, because E is so snazzy and important, it actually gets its own special name for its logarithm. So it's called the natural logarithm. And so you use the LN button on your calculator, and that means exactly the same thing as log with base E. So having explored this tangent about what a logarithm actually is, I'll now tell you for free that the Arrhenius equation can be rearranged as the natural log of K, where that's the same thing as log with base E, is equal to the natural log of A, the pre-exponential factor, take away the activation energy divided by RT. And what you need to be able to do is rearrange this form of the equation to make each other part the subject. The first thing we're going to do when rearranging the Arrhenius equation is to get the natural log of A on its own. And you might be thinking, well, why would I bother doing that? Because I already know what A is. I don't need the natural log of A. Um, but doing this is an intermediate step in being able to isolate the activation energy and also the temperature. So we kind of have to do it. And also it's easy to do. So in order to get the natural log of A on its own, we're going to add the activation energy divided by RT to both sides. So having done that, we can now subtract the natural log of K from both sides and then multiply both sides by RT in order to get the activation energy on its own. And this is a really important version of the equation because it's a really common exam question. Here's a bunch of data, tell us what's the activation energy for this reaction. Um, and then the final thing that we're going to do is going to be to get temperature on its own. So right now we've got R multiplied by temperature multiplied by natural log of A take away natural log of K. So if we divide both sides of the equation by R and by natural log of A take away natural log of K, then we get this form of the equation. So we could have a bunch of um, data for a particular reaction and we know what the rate is and they ask you what's the temperature where those conditions give that rate and this is what we need. Now, although you definitely should know how to rearrange equations and this should be something you're comfortable doing, there's nothing to stop you from just learning each one of these already rearranged equations and just pulling out the right one as and when you need it. Now let's look at three worked examples for questions that could feasibly come up in the A-level exams where you're asked to use this rearranged version of the Arrhenius equation. In this first question, we've been given a temperature in Kelvin, we've been given a value for K and a value for the constant A and also the gas constant. And we're asked to calculate the value of the activation energy. Now it's worth pointing out again that we're asked to give it in kilojoules per mole. But remember, the Arrhenius equation is going to give you an answer in joules per mole. So you are going to need to convert that before you give your final answer. So here's our rearranged version of the equation. And we can start by substituting some numbers into that. So we've been given the gas constant, we've been given the temperature, and we can use our calculator to work out values for each of those natural logarithms. Now, the numbers that you're expecting to get will be fairly similar regardless of the question, because that's just the nature of a logarithmic scale. Um, so you're expecting that your natural log of A is probably going to be a number between, I don't know, 10 and 20. Um, and then your natural log for K is always going to be a negative number. And the reason for that is that your actual value for K is going to be between zero and one. And so this is going to give us a negative logarithm. Um, so if we multiply all those out, then we get an answer that looks a little bit like that. And then there are two things we need to do before giving a final answer. We need to convert to um, kilojoules per mole. And also we need to take account of the significant figures. So all of the numbers that I've been given in the question are to three significant figures, and therefore my answer should be as well. If that made sense to you and you want to pause the video and look at the second question yourself, go ahead. If not, I'm going to talk through it. So. In this question, we've got a very similar format, um, but with the exception that now we've been given the temperature in degrees C. So before I can substitute in my numbers, I am going to need to convert that to Kelvin by adding 273. So I've now got 8.31 times 298, still multiplied by the natural log of A, 
take away the natural log of k. And so again, as with the previous example, I've got a similar size number for my natural log of a, and I've got another negative number for my natural log of k. When I multiply all of those together, I get a similar size number, and then again, I need to divide by a thousand to put it into kilojoules per mole and give my answer to three significant figures. Now, it's actually quite unrealistic to think that you're just going to get a question where you have to calculate the activation energy. More commonly, this is going to be a multi-step process, and maybe in part one of the calculation, you're asked to work out what the partial orders of the reactants are and write a rate equation. And then in part two, you're asked to calculate a value for K. And then in part three, they ask you to work out the activation energy and say, if you couldn't do parts one and two, here's a number that you can use but we usually do those intermediate steps first. So here's a question that's a bit more like that. So we have been given a rate equation and then we've got a temperature and some initial concentrations and an initial rate and also a value for the natural log of A. So firstly, we need to find the value of K. So I'm gonna take my rate equation, um, rate is K times A times B, and I'm going to rearrange this and then substitute in some numbers and get a value for k of 0.09. Now, I can use that value of k to work out my activation energy. So again, activation energy is RT multiplied by natural log of A, take natural log of k. So 8.31 times 293, because again, I've converted my temperature to Kelvin, multiplied by 13.9, take away whatever the natural log of 0.09 is. And this gives me an activation energy of about 40,000 joules per mole, which I then convert to be kilojoules per mole and report to three significant figures. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out the rest of the series, including the next video about how to solve the Arrhenius equation using graphical methods. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe below. Thanks for watching.